In this video, we're going to talk about how I created a painting for the cover of the next sequence of modules for Quest Givers. It's called Hidden Valley. And we're going through the processes of how I basically layered and built up this image to what it becomes at the end of the video. So I began with uh, the sketch to kind of create the structure of the image. Um, it's essentially the characters viewing down a whole bunch of tunnels, overgrown plant-like tunnels in a jungle-style environment where these large snake-like creatures have burrowed through the undergrowth and created these massive tunnels. Off in the distance is a temple pyramid and beyond that are the edges of the valley mountains that form the extent of the valley itself and then the sky above and you can see I've started to put in sort of details of the creeper looking vines that make up the plants in this area. So it's a sort of a mixture of a few different ideas and and things and you know what I'm trying to get at is a storybook looking cover so in terms of color in terms of subject matter and that sort of thing just sort of the, the look of it is something that I, I wanted to look like one of those old sort of fairy tale books so I went out and recorded a few uh, images uh, mainly of vegetation and that sort of stuff just to get an idea of color of light um, and uh, this is just from nearby my house um, and I also wanted to get the sense of a window. So looking through, what do things in the foreground look like? What do things in the background look like? And then there was also this reference photo that someone else had taken that just happened to appear on my Google TV. And I uh, used that as my reference for the mountain colors and rock faces and things like that. And also to give it a sense of a valley, um, aerial perspective, all that kind of stuff, uh, looking at those sort of things and, and then continuing on. So then I began work. I, this is a, a canvas board. So it's basically just a very thin um, board. The canvas is stuck to the board itself. And uh, I applied just the basic colors of what I was looking for. Uh, these are just sort of basic paints. There's nothing special about them. Um, and so I laid down the, the base colors of what I wanted and then also using the brush strokes to get a sense of texture of the vegetation, the mountains, um, and the sky in terms of the striations in the sky. And really this is just a, a basic underpainting to give me an idea of one form, two light, and three uh, where everything is going to be visually in terms of texture. So I get a sense of flow. As, as you can see in the mountains, you can see the brush strokes sort of giving you a sense of where things are flowing. Um, I've put in the dark recesses of where the, the shadows will be in the mountains. And I've done the sort of same sort of thing with the vegetation um, below. The shadow at the top is merely from the easel. So this stage is a lot less about detail and more about shape uh, and and laying down the foundation of texture so we get a sense of where that texture is going to be and what sort of shape is going to be that is going to that texture is going to wrap around effectively so this is a very basic basic underpainting um, and will also give help me with color reference going forward so i build colors upon the ones that you see here so now we begin to build up the image. Uh, essentially, I just used yellow paint here to, one, give it a sense of warmth, and two, highlight where the edges, where light is hitting various aspects of the objects. Uh, you can begin to see the tunnels that are forming in the vegetation at the bottom third. Um, in the middle, I've just um, put yellow where the pyramid is going to be because that sort of gives the pyramid a warm base color. Um, and then in the mountains, I've just used the brush to begin to um, create the rocky faces in the, in the mountains and then also creating the sort of rim lighting of the, of the sky above so that there is a, a very bright light in the sky. Now originally you can still see where I was going to put the sun 
and I had actually sort of left that somewhat um, somewhat unpainted, but um, I changed my mind, and the sun was going to be further up. Um, but it just goes to show, at this point, you can still make changes, because you haven't started painting in all kinds of details, and um, part of the reason is because I'm going to have the title of the book that needs to be there, sort of in the top third, um, and so there needs to be space there, and I didn't want to replicate the same thing on the previous book cover where there was a moon there, um, so I felt that I wanted to change it a little bit. But um, here we are at least at now, everything's starting to take shape with the rim highlighting. The next stage was to mix in some black and brown to begin to do almost like uh, the edges of objects were focusing more on the shadow side. Uh, so we did yellow for the highlighted side with the f side that's being hit by the light. And for the other side, I'm now using black. It does give it a sense of like almost like a comic book look to some extent, but that's you know, that effect changes as we apply more color and texture and things to the image. At the moment, it's it, it does help to define the shapes. So that it's defined more of the vegetation, more of the vines, more of the background um, faces in, in the mountains. Um, more color has been applied to the mountains as well. And there's been some work done on the vegetation. So the vegetation has the sense of it getting smaller and getting further away, sort of up into this mountain. So we're within the valley now, looking up out towards the high mountains above with the pyramid in the middle. Quite a lot was done on this next phase. I've added in the pyramid, which is essentially two or three different forms of gray. Um, I mixed in a little bit of yellow here and there just to, again, bring forth a little bit of warmth into it. Um, I've gone over the whole image extensively with white um, and fed that gray from the pyramid. I've, I've put that into the flooring of the sort of tunnel that we're in. Uh, so just more of sort of dead floor from bits and pieces that have fallen off. Um, the white has been used to um, give that sense of brightness. Um, so some of the edges that were originally yellow now have white highlights in them. Um, I've gone over the mountains extensively with more texture and more detail. Um, and gone over it with the greys and that sort of thing to to get across the sense of the rockiness of the mountains. Um, but because it's off in the distance, I'm not applying too much in terms of detail. Um, and because I'm going for that storyboard effect, I don't need to be photorealistic. I just need to convey the sense of mountains in the distance. Now I've whitewashed the sky and I've pulled the the brush away from the mountain so you get the sort of flaring type effect and we're going to work on the sky a little bit more in the next um, section but this is just to give it a sense of the sort of the sun hitting the back of the mountains and sort of passing over this valley uh, and the glow that comes from that. Now obviously with applying a lot of these sort of whites and grays um, we have begun to desaturate this image somewhat um, and um, we'll work on how to manipulate these sort of things and the, um, the various sort of tonal ranges of color, especially when we add other objects in the, the tonal range of color also changes when there's different things that your eye can focus on. Now, I did add two dark areas just above the pyramid to the left and to the right. That's where there's sort of these clearings within the jungle where there's these villages. Um, and we're going to sort of make that a little bit more noticeable. This layer really serves to add more detail to the vegetation. So I've added in all these little creeper vine things growing all over it. So this gives it that sense of that fairy tale look for one. It also has a sort of growth overgrowing look to it that this is alive and it's trying to sort of close the gaps around things um, we've added more color in we've added more shadows in um, so everything's coming together a little bit more in terms of the quality of the light and of what's happening there's still a lot to do we've worked on the sky a bit so we've uh, we've reduced that white down with a, a, a mid-tone 
um, sorry, a, a light tone blue. Um, we've maintained that sense of a glow behind the mountain that's happening there. And we're going to work more on the aerial perspective as we go forward. But for now, this is more of the beginning to build up the details in the image. We still have figures and things to place into it. But again, this is just as we go each stage, it's a, manipulating the colors, manipulating the detail, adding things in. You'll see that I've added a little bit of detail into the vegetation going up uh, through the valley. Um, there's different um, of the colors from the um, lower foreground that have been put in there as well. And there's just little dark patches and things that have been added in just to give it a sense of um, a change in shape so that it's more an organic shape rather than just a flat area of texture. Uh, so it's, you know, it's going over little hills and rocks and around things and so on and so forth. So it's a, a more a morass of stuff than just a sort of a flat texture going from one point to another. Then we added a richer, darker blue into the sky, maintaining the sort of the flare effect that's behind the mountains. You can see it's also behind the vines at the top as well. So you get a real sense of that sort of light hitting these vines. And as I've accentuated that with the white going around sort of the open edge of the vines that you're seeing through, you get that sense of that there's a very bright light in the sky. Now, the light in the room is reflecting off the uh, paint. Um, so that that is not the texture. Um, that, that's not painted on there. That is just a light reflection. Um, and you can see, obviously, the shadow of the easel is covering up some of that but uh, not to be mistaken for actual paint. Here I deepened the shadows a little bit more, especially going into the tunnel, uh, and I've added in uh, the wisps of smoke coming from the villages and from the top of the temple pyramid. Now you'll see I also sort of retroactively added in a little bit of green into the pyramid so that it again looks like there's, there's this vegetation is overgrowing that structure. Um, and so it's less gray than it would normally look because of the yellow that's behind it and the green that's on top of it. And then with obviously the highlights and all that sort of thing, it sort of lessens, lessens the contrast of that gray to the vegetation around it. Now, the next part is to add in the figures that are at the bottom. So I began to actually um, sketch out some reference drawings. These two characters are a magic user and a fighter. They are actually referenced on the book cover of The North Road. Uh, if you don't know what The North Road is, my other channel, Quest Givers, which I do with DM Scotty, we did a Kickstarter for the book The North Road, and that has a black and white um, line art sketch, which includes these two characters and a third character who we're going to add in now. Um, but that's essentially, um, I'm trying to bring that across so that we, that we have some form of continuation, stylistic continuation from one to another. And these two figures were then added into the painting and shadows are created to give it a sense of the light casting dark shadows. And this uh, immediately helps to change the focus of the picture because what are these characters looking at uh, where are they oriented um, you know it changes the sense of what this is uh, you've got two um, people who are in different stances that you're trying to get some sort of emotion from characters that you can't see their faces so all these sort of things you've got to consider now the fighter obviously is sort of a little bit hesitant in his stance the wizard is more in a sense of wonder. She is holding up her staff. They've obviously got the magical effect of the head of the staff on there. Um, that, uh, you know, it's giving you all these sort of visual clues as to what the kind of story is going on here, uh, what sort of adventure you're going to have. Uh, all these bits and pieces help to just create a visual interest in the picture and hopefully also an interest in the adventures in the book. 
So this next figure is that of an archer. Uh, in the, on the cover of the previous book, they were further ahead along the road and leading a horse, and this one they're not. But I want to get the sense of the, the, an archer with the bow, um, just a different characterization, and they're going to be on the other side of the image. And um, all these sort of things help you. Just I'm just doing loose sketches here. I'm not trying to get a huge amount of detail because the image itself is not going to be super detailed. But you want to get a sense of the character and a sense of what it is they're looking at and what their reaction is based on where their arm positions are, the way their head is tilted, um, the way their weapons are held, uh, the way they're standing. All these sort of things come into trying to give a sense of what it's looking at. So if you just look at a sketch of the character, don't really have much idea of what's happening. But when you place them into the image, your entire perspective changes. So the way that I did these was I essentially used a burnt umber paint and painted in the silhouette of the character and the shadows. So it's important that two things you want to know what light it's blocking out and what it shadows it is casting as an object so I, those are the things that are for me are important to get right first and so that's why i do that with this so you can still see some of the detail of the background through the character silhouette that's not a problem because as we proceed ahead and we add more dark colors and and lighter colors uh, the background will disappear from that what this helps to do is it also helps to separate the character from the background because a lot of the times when people are painting these things, they paint the character in while they're painting in the background. And so you don't get that separation uh, because here I obviously I painted in the background first. I have a lot more of an opportunity to integrate this character into the world but keep it separate um, I can work with positioning a little bit more, play with the light a little bit more, um, and, and just sort of get the sort of sense that I want when I've already got my background image there. I find this very, very useful when painting. It's very difficult to do this when illustrating because once you've sort of drawn it, you can't draw over it again without sort of using a whiteout or something, and that's horrible. Um, but with painting, you can do that, and that's why in painting I like to do, I like to build it up in these sort of layers. And you can just keep working on it and keep adding new things as you wish, but there is obviously a point where you want to stop. You don't want to go too far. So here we have the detail of the archer all painted in. Obviously, I've, I've darkened the shadows. I've darkened the background. I've added little highlights and little bits of color to change the color of the hair, uh, the um, bow, uh, I've got sort of the little line of the string of the bow, all these little bits and pieces sell what it is with just a simple blob of paint. So when you think about it, there's not a huge amount of detail in here. It's suggesting more detail than that than is actually there. And I think that's that's a lot of a trick to these sort of things is trying to do less uh, and get more. Um, so with hair, it's just like one stroke of the brush with a yellow gets you the brush marks that you need for that hair. And then it's just about applying your highlights uh, along those brush strokes to then accentuate those sort of things. Um, the feathers on the arrows um, in the quiver um, are lit and are glowing a little bit so you want to get that sense of the light can still pass through that kind of object um, and it's, the, the figure is quite dark behind now the darkness of the figure on the right is a little bit more than the figures on the left uh, that's to me is a happy accident because the the you would have variations in in shadow um, and I feel it, it actually gives that character to stand out just a little bit more so that you get something that behind where you're looking. So if you, you're standing in there with them, behind you is a darker patch on the right than there is on the left. So there might be more reflection coming from the left or another hole in the ceiling. So you've got this variation in, um, in the actual tone of the image which again gives it a little bit more interest so your your eyes drawn to these characters having a look at them and then wandering through the picture because now they slightly obscure the the tunnels in the background 
um, you, you go from them and you kind of look from their perspective. You're looking out into the valley and then you're wondering, what is this pyramid? Where is this place? Where are these mountains? What's happening here? And that's really what you want. You want the person to begin to formulate a story in their mind. Finally, I wanted to add an object that gave you a sense of culture of the place. Um, so I'm putting in these sort of stacked stones with kind of glyphs on them. Um, the top glyph with a triangle is the sort of an idea of the pyramid that's ahead. Um, so maybe it's sort of a mile marker or, or a sign saying, you know, this way to the pyramid and this way to such and such a village. Um, and just using basic geometric shapes. Um, so you get a sense of there's some sort of culture happening here. There's some, something has been here before and um, there's some thought process or civilization or something that exists within the confines of this overgrown jungle. So that stack of stones is then placed into the image again. I did the silhouette first, as I showed you with the um, character on the right, and also on the left, those other characters are done the same way. And then I built it up with the shadows and the highlights and the base gray color to give it a sense of these strange carved stones stacked on top of one another. Um, and you know, now there's, these characters can be looking at more than just the pyramid. And with the haloing effect, if you've watched a few of my videos, you know I like the haloing effect. With the haloing effect on those stones, it sort of draws the attention to that, to this whole group of people standing around here trying to figure out what's going on. And that really tells you the story of quest givers and how we do things. We like to, we don't like to sort of lead with these long-winded explanations of what's happening. We prefer that the people go through this and discover what's happening in the story rather than being told what's happening in the story. Now, onto this, I have also now applied the aerial uh, perspective. So that's where the backgrounds get lighter towards the mountains. That's a simple uh, matter of very watered-down white has been applied. And then with a stippling effect, I've added in clouds. So sort of the misty clouds around the mountain it gives the atmosphere a little bit more of a sense of it not being static, that it too is living and is um, occupying the space in the distance. So that has um, brought down the dark tone of the sky back to sort of more a normal sort of blue sky tone. And that's helping overall to balance everything out um, in terms of the color of this, in terms of the saturation and the tone that I've been looking for. And finally, I just added some vines creeping from the ground up over those stones to give a sense that that culture we just spoke about is being swallowed up by this environment, this overgrowing jungle morass of stuff. And to me, that sort of has achieved what I've been looking for. I've achieved that sort of storybook look. Um, you've got sort of the elements in there of everything that's going to be in these adventures. And also, you know, you've, you've got a, a nice sort of stylistic approach to what to me is quite an interesting image. But of course your comments and criticisms and things in the like button and argument section are much appreciated. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you're interested in the stories and that sort of thing, check out questgivers.com. And of course, all the crafting and stuff I'll do on the DMG info and 70 system, my rule system, which I'm still working on. Thank you for watching.